More than ever, loyal fans and early backers are rewarded for their support by having broken, half-finished titles slopped onto their lap with enough bugs to resemble a maggot-ridden corpse, and are then told to just calm down and wait until the devs have got a spare minute to fix the bloody thing. Yet sometimes the wait is more than worth it, and the games on this list started out so rocky it looked like Sly Stallone had caved their faces in but went on to be the best around with nobody able to take them down. We've covered this topic before and now I'm back with seven more, so let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are seven more hated video games that are awesome now. Number 7. GTA V – The Online Portion while it's almost impossible to envision anyone truly hating the GTA experience, outside of the recent definitive trilogy catching more than enough rounds to make it sink in a lake through sheer weight of lead, but there was actually a time when even the monolithic GTA 5 was being raked over the coals. In an example of, let's just call it sheer blatant lies, Rockstar's monstrous backpedaling when it came to the online components of the game won it no favours with the fanbase, who were promised, back when the game launched on the bloody PS3 and the Xbox 360, that the multiplayer mode would be shipped with it and in a ready-to-run state. What followed was a cavalcade of issues, all of which ruined the online experience so much that many players swore off it entirely. Connection issues, crashes, and massive server downtime meant that the online fun was cut short or never even started in many cases. Worse still, the much-touted and, some would say, over-marketed heists feature was nowhere to be seen, mysteriously being held back until the launch of the next generation of hardware. Hmm, almost like it was being used as a selling point to buy the title again on a different console. So, hmm. All in all, this left many fans seething at what should have been the game's defining feature. Yet fret not, because in the years that followed, Rockstar has pumped out so much content and support for this mode that it's genuinely overwhelming, almost to the point where you begin to worry about what GTA 6 can even bring to the table. Number 6. The Elder Scrolls Online so here's a question for you. How do you take a property with as much goodwill and fan support as the Elder Scrolls series, give it the MMORPG rub and pour millions of dollars into it, only to then piss off fans entirely within the first five minutes of playtime? Well, the answer to this is you display your need to hoover their wallets further and provide an experience that literally states to them that they don't matter in the slightest. Good going, Bethesda. When players booted up the title originally, they were given a selection of races to choose from. However, in a pretty churlish move, the Imperial race was completely locked off except for those that stumped up the hefty price of a collector's edition. Now remember, this was a subscription model game, meaning that you just paid full price for a title only to be charged more monthly for the privilege to play it and then this on top of it. Ah, well, surely if the gameplay is good, then it'll be worth the constant price of admission, right? Well, again, remember that this was a Bethesda title and so carried with it a metric shed load of bugs and issues. Nowadays, the title is going from strength to strength, and adjustments to its pricing model have been nothing but positive to the game's overall perception. But for a long old while, this was actually the worst way to enjoy an otherwise beloved franchise. Number 5. Final Fantasy XIV if there's ever a story to make you want to fist pump into the air and yell, yes, you massive ledge, come on, it's the tale of Final Fantasy XIV, a game which could, and were it under a different developer likely would have, slipped under the waves and never been heard from again. For the beginning of this game was so tumultuous that it resembled a squall that threatened to drown the entire franchise, and trust me, the fan base was just as salty and moody as the Final Fantasy VIII protagonist himself. Not that they didn't have reason to complain, however, as upon launch, Final Fantasy XIV was a game with persistent server crashes and full of tales of fans having accounts out and out deleted. Plus, contained a horrendous UI, making the admittedly nice looking action feel like it was being viewed through blinkers. But this was not the end of Final Fantasy XIV, it was merely the beginning, as after a rather hefty amount of money and Phoenix Downs were poured into the project, the devs were allowed to take the game offline and fix, well, just about everything. Returning under the new name of Realm Reborn, Final Fantasy XIV returned to the fray a more live and competent MMORPG, and with years of support plus countless updates, it now stands as not just one of the best examples in the genre, but arguably the most popular Final Fantasy game and say with me kids of all time with it recently having so many players that the devs ran out of space to accommodate them all now that is pretty popular number four star wars battlefront 2 
I feel like I could just hold up a picture of a sinking ship that's on fire with a nuclear explosion happening in the background and just say that this picture best represents what was going on with Star Wars Battlefront 2 at launch. But you know what? That's not entirely true, if only for the fact that the picture itself would also have to be on fire. Yes, to call this game's launch a disaster would be an insult to the Titanic, as its loot box controversies alone caused a worldwide re-evaluation of the topic, and its intensive grind for unlocks was enough to sour the experience completely. Yet, several years on and thanks to the committed efforts of the devs, plus countless free map and mode rollouts, Star Wars Battlefront 2 actually did become not just a competent shooter, but a really brilliant example of the Star Wars IP running on full steam. If you can get past the utter swamp of negative press, then there is truly a game here worthy of your time. And while it's now received its last official update, it is still drawing in massive numbers to this day. Seeing as we might not be getting a third installment for a very long time, if at all, it was imperative that Battlefront 2 came good in the end. And as it stands right now, it's certainly better than most of the other risable FPS titles on the market. Number 3. Batman Arkham Origins Despite being one of DC's hottest properties and already sporting a batch of video games with so much critical acclaim that it'd actually be hard to glide around with all of those trophies hanging off it, fans of Batman weren't feeling all that satiated by Juicy Bruce's Arkham Origins announcement. In fact, thanks to the reveal that Rocksteady wasn't going to be working on the game themselves, some of the more fanatical Bat brood actively hated the idea of this game, claiming it to be an example of a quick cash grab by Warner Brothers. Things got even worse when a multiplayer mode was announced that seemed to cater to absolutely none of what fans have been actually asking for, and those that played the game early or at launch were very vocal about how the combat just seemed a little off. To compound things even further, the rather weak source revealed that Black Mask wasn't the actual main villain was a massive letdown to those hoping that the ever-present Joker shackles were going to be broken. Changes had clearly been made, but none of them were earning Origins any favours. And yet, years after release, and with Arkham Knight now capping off the experience as it stands, Origins finally feels feels like it's found its place at the front of the queue. It's a prequel story after all, setting in motion the events that do actually take a full three games to cash in on. And now the combat doesn't actually feel as wonky when you realise it. It feels like Batman is quite literally trying to find his feet in the early days of his crime fighting. It might not have set the world alight and been burned by fans not feeling like it moved the needle much, but this is an experience that deserves to be brought in from the cold, as in all fairness, there's a lot to commend about its setting, crime scene sections, and, indeed, its overpowered gadgets. Number 2. Anarchy Online now, Anarchy Online was not a game that was well received upon launch, and some of the negative press against it definitely stemmed from how loudly the title boasted of some of its features. True, the leaked customer billing information, massive server issues, choppy frame rate, and constant crashes didn't help either, but the boasting certainly set things up to crash and burn in spectacular fashion. The graphics were, at the time, incredibly advanced when compared to other MMOs. Its sci-fi setting felt like a breath of fresh air when compared to all of the high fantasy guff that was being wafted around by every other developer at the time, and the devs even stated that they were trying to make every single area of the map worth exploring so that players should look forward to deep diving into all corners. However, six months into the launch of the game, not many players were willing to even take a glance at Anarchy Online, let alone dive into it, thanks to the game space resembling a bloody tire fire. Critics had mauled the game's performance issues, and those that were online were facing constant game-breaking problems, even with a second press tour with a fixed version of the game done by the devs couldn't save the damage that had been done. So what did Funcom do next? Well, they put their heads down and they got to work, releasing patches, updates, expansions, and constantly monitoring fan feedback until a year later when the game finally took the world by the throat and never let go. As of recording this, millions of players have been lured into this immersive world and it has snagged gaming awards left, right, and center, proving that a great idea can come good with a ton of hard work behind it. And number one, Doom 3. It's so weird to even consider that a title with this much doom in the name, and that is a lot of doom, would ever be considered as anything less than the second coming in this day and age, seeing as the 2016 reboot kicked the bloody face off the industry and Eternal will forever live on in the hearts and minds of fans. But yes, at one point in time, the thought of playing Doom 3 was like sharing a bath with your nan. A hard pass, thanks. Was it because the game was poorly made or executed in a terrible manner? Or well, far from it, as the tense atmosphere, slow-burning 
survival horror elements and meticulously well-implemented lighting mechanics created a beautiful cocktail of cack-in-your-trousers moments. The real issue, though, stemmed from the fact that the elements of the game that I've just described didn't really gel with the air quotes tone of what a Doom game was at the time, which, lest we forget, was about being a nigh-unstoppable demon-slaying machine. Here, you were much more on the back foot, and for Doom purists, it was all a bit too much change to feel like a Doom game, and thus many, despite fairly positive reviews, just gave it a pass. Still, upon returning to the title today, it's genuinely incredible to see how successful the team was at making you feel completely against the odds, and even blows away most modern-day horror FPS titles. If you looked at Doom 3 and figured that this was a chug of sour milk, then trust me, my friend, it's actually a game that's aged like fine wine. And there we go, my friends. Those were seven more hated video games that are awesome now. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my Warhammer battle reports and streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well, my friend, with love and respect. You do not deserve hatred externally or internally, my friend. You are a massive ledge, and I just want you to know that you deserve the best thing in life and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. Now go out there and absolutely smash it, you massive ledge. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.